Have you ever wondered how to do high quality 3D printing time lapses like this? Makers have been showing off the 3D printing process with time lapses for years now. I got my start with a cheap webcam, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and an Ender 3 Pro. Jump forward a couple years and lots of 3D printers have that functionality baked in. But what if you want to take it up a notch? Well, there are a few things that you can do. We have here the Bamboo Lab A1 and A1 Mini. These are some of my favorite 3D printers and they are the ones that we're going to use in this tutorial. But if you don't have these printers, don't worry because nearly everything we cover in this video will either be directly transferable or can be done fairly simply in most slicers. The first and by far the easiest way to improve your time lapses on these printers is by one setting in Bamboo Studio. In the Others tab of Bamboo Studio, in the Prepare dialog, there's a section labeled Special Mode. Change the time-lapse setting from Traditional to Smooth. This will move the print head and build plate to specific locations for a few moments between each layer, giving a much smoother time-lapse effect. Then all you need to do is start your print, and you're off to the races. For an easy button press, this looks pretty nice, but we can do better. While playing around in the settings, I realized that in the Smooth time-lapse mode, the head goes to the exact same point between each layer, which gave me an idea. If I could get the printer to press a trigger button for one of our high-end mirrorless cameras, between each layer, it would be a game changer. So I went down to my local Micro Center and picked up the Sony RMT P1BT Remote Commander. This little guy is a remote camera trigger that will wirelessly tell our mirrorless camera to take a photo. Back in the office and remote in hand, I took some measurements and jumped right into Autodesk Fusion, where I designed a printable mod that would hold the remote and a separate one that would easily attach to the head of the A1 or A1 Mini. After removing the original X-axis end cap and replacing it with the printable mod, I ran a quick test with a small calibration cube, and success! We can now use professional photography equipment for a beautiful time lapse. It was at this point, however, that I remembered a video that I saw a few years ago in which the lyrics from Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush were being printed in time with the song itself before revealing the full print is a bust of the character Vecna from season four of Stranger Things. I loved that idea, and I wanted to figure out how they did it. And while I'm not entirely certain that my methodology is exactly how they did it, I did develop a plan that consistently results in top-notch time-lapse prints. The key to it is unfortunately math, but don't worry, I did it so you don't have to. Now, there are a lot of things that you're gonna need, but it's not nearly as intimidating as it might seem. You're going to need the example spreadsheet on our printables page, a video editing software, I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro, the video or audio file you wish to use, the 3D model that you want the words to appear inside, the 3D design program of your choice, Bamboo Studio, and strangely, Cura. We'll double back to see why we're using multiple slicers in just a minute. Open your audio or video file in your video editor. Throw it on the timeline and fill in the frame rate of the video as well as the end point of the video. So say the video ends at 42 seconds and 15 frames and has a frame rate of 30 FPS. For frame rate, you would fill in 30. For video length seconds, you would fill in 42. And for video length frames, you would fill in 15. Next, you will need to find the start and end times of small chunks of audio. I usually determine how long each chunk should be based on the number of words. Two to three words per chunk. You could go a little bit over, but usually only if they're short words. Fill in the start and end times on the spreadsheet of each of those chunks alongside the text chunks themselves so you can stay organized. Once that's been accomplished, you are well on your way, but there are two more numbers that you're going to need. Open your 3D file in Bamboo Studio and slice it as you normally would. Then find out the number of layers and layer height of the print that you're wanting to do. Enter those into the spreadsheet and the math part of this is over. Now it's time to make the text into STL files. This is going to be different depending on which program you use. I prefer Fusion for this as it's fairly easy to type the text, extrude it, and then export. Once you have your exported STLs, you're going to want to take them and your main print file into Cura. The reason for using Cura is twofold. Firstly, in Bamboo Studio, there's no way to have an STL that is not part of an assembly floating in midair, which we're going to need to do. And secondly, once you add an STL to an assembly in Bamboo, the coordinates seemingly become relative to one another. There may be other issues going on, but that's an investigation for another video. If you know what's happening, let us know down in the comments. Once your main file and text is in Cura, you need to change the orientation so that the text is legible from above. 
Once the text is rotated, it needs to be moved on the z-axis to the height specified in the spreadsheet. At this point, the text should be in the middle of the main model. Now it's time to set the z-scale to the thickness calculated in the spreadsheet. More than likely, once you do that, your text will be suddenly way too big, but don't panic. We'll just uncheck the uniform thickness option and start scaling down the X and Y settings equally so that we maintain the aspect ratio of the model. Once the text is completely obscured by the main model, you'll rinse and repeat as many times as necessary until all of the text is within the main model. Now for the twist. Select only the main model and scale it down to a minuscule size. I usually go about 10 millimeters tall. Make sure that the option to drop down model is selected and then make three clones of the model and place them at the four opposing corners of the build plate. Now all that's left to do in Cura is to save the project file, unless you like living on the edge, and then export everything as one STL file. Now that the most tedious part of our time lapse is over, it's time to open Bamboo Studio and open our main file. Once the main file is imported, go to the per object view and right click on the name of your main model. A submenu should appear where you can select add next negative part, and then click on load. From there, you just import the STL you made in Cura a few steps ago, making sure that it is centered on the build plate. Slice as normal, making sure that the smooth time-lapse setting is enabled, and that's everything you need to set up a time-lapse like ours. There are still a few steps left, like setting up your camera and connecting the end cap, but those are going to be a little bit more specific to your printer. For the end cap of the A1 and A1 Mini, it's just two screws, one from underneath, and then one coming at the printer itself. If you have questions, put them down below and we will do our best to answer them. And if you want a micro center near you, put hashtag I want a micro center near me down in the comments.